Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Muhammad Awais and I am an assistant professor in Akhtar Said uh, Medical College and Akhtar Said Hospital. Our today's topic is uh, upper respiratory tract infections and in which we will discuss tonsillitis group and uh, acute epiglottitis one by one. So first is the tonsillitis. As uh, you already know tonsillitis is a form of pharyngitis and uh, in which there is an intense inflammation of the tonsils often with a purulent exudate. There are common pathogens uh, which are bacteria and viruses and uh, example in bacteria is uh, Sorry, my mobile is ringing. So, example in bacteria is uh, group A beta hemolytic streptococci, and uh, example in viruses in, uh, is uh, Epstein Barr virus, which causes infectious mononucleosis. Well, it is the name of the disease, and uh, these are. Uh, the examples of bacteria and virus, but there are other many bacteria and viruses which can cause tonsillitis and uh, pharyngitis. Coming to the clinical features, although the surface exudates seen in infectious mononucleosis are reported to be more membranous in appearance compared to the bacterial tonsillitis, but uh, in reality, in fairness, it is not possible to distinguish clinically between viral and bacterial causes. So no doctor sitting in an OPD would check the throat of the child and just by seeing the throat and examining the throat can tell you that yes, this is bacterial or viral. So there are some clinical parameters, however. As per rule, uh, as you already know, the bacterial infections are more intense. Uh, for example, there are marked constitutional disturbances such as headache and uh, apathy and uh, abdominal pain due to tonsillitis, which is called, it is called mesenteric adenitis. And uh, uh, some uh, time you get white tonsillar exudate on throat examination and also on examination you could find uh, cervical lymphadenopathy and uh, it is more common in the bacterial infection. Uh, but it is not hard and fast rule. So in this diagram, as you could see, the redness, the erythema of the throat, the fascial pillars, jugula, the posterior phalangeal wall, the tonsils are inflamed and uh, a little bit bigger in size as well. And you could al also see the white exudates on the tonsils. However, you cannot always see these uh, wide exudates. Sometimes there could be only inflammation of the throat. So after a simple case of pharyngitis or tonsillitis in which you suspect, uh, uh, for example, a bacterial infection, uh, you would definitely need antibiotics for your patients. And uh, the first choice of antibiotic is often penicillin or uh, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, you would go for the erythromycin. And uh, these are the most commonly prescribed uh, medications in the uh, bacterial infection. But uh, one should keep uh, in mind that the most of the uh, varangitis and tonsillitis are through the viruses. Only a third uh, uh, one third cases are due to the bacteria. Um, the antibiotics definitely may hasten the recovery from uh, the septococcal infection in order to eradicate the organism uh, to prevent rheumatic fever, which is a complication of group A, beta hemolytic streptococci. 10 days of treatment of antibiotic is required. In severe cases, children may require hospital admission for intravenous fluid administration and the pain in the throat. They need analgesia if they are unable to swallow solids or liquids. So most of the cases you would send them back home. But uh, as uh, 
I already said there would be few cases who would not be able to take orally well, especially if the child is dehydrated, coming in OPD with upper respiratory infections, you may need to keep the child in the hospital for IV hydration. Uh, in case of uh, um, infectious mononucleosis, which is a viral infection, if somebody gives amoxicillin, that can cause uh, widespread maculopapular rash on the body. And uh, sometimes this kind of MCQ you can get in the exam as well. And the question uh, would ask you what could be the best diagnosis after giving moxicillin the child uh, developed maculopapular rash. So the diagnosis, the answer would be infectious mononucleosis. So this is a bit about the acute, this was a bit about the acute tonsillitis. Now we'd, we would move towards the second uh, upper respiratory tract infection, which is croup. And uh, it is uh, quite common in certain seasons in Pakistan as well. So with the laryngeotracheal bronchitis, usually called croup, there is mucosal inflammation and increased secretions affecting the airway. But uh, it is the edema of the subglottic area that is potentially dangerous in young children because it may result in critical narrowing of the trachea. This is uh, uh, and this is an emergency, uh, not necessarily present in all the groups, but in severe group, uh, this could be the uh, life-threatening emergency. Viral group accounts for over 95% of laryngotracheal infection so the mainly cause is viral and the most uh, notorious uh, organism for that is para influenza virus and the most common one and but other viruses such as human meta pneumo virus respiratory sensitive virus and influenza can produce a similar clinical picture troop occurs from six months to six years of age the peak incidence is in the second year of life and uh, the weather most common is the autumn. What are the clinical features of croup? Nobody comes with the diagnosis on the forehead that the child is croup. So you may get the child uh, with the problems that mother uh, may come in the OPD and uh, would describe that the child is having a low grade fever on the coryza and has having hoarse voice, his voice has been changed for one to two days. And uh, sometimes the child coughs in the OPT and if you hear the cough, that will be typical barking cough and along with a strider. And uh, strider is an inspiratory sound uh, produced due to the narrowing of the upper airway. Sometimes you can hear it from the um, naked ears like you know, without the use of stethoscope but uh, most of the time you need a stethoscope and a silent room to uh, hear or auscultate for strider and uh, symptoms are usually worse in the night this is the radiographic presentation of a child with a croup you could see the narrowing of the airway and uh, in the subglottic area, it is called the steeple sign. And the letter view is showed as well. So, management. When the upper airway obstruction is mild, the strider in the chest procession disappear when the child is at rest. Or uh, sometimes the strider may disappear when it is severe as well. So, in the case of complete obstruction of the airway, so uh, the disappearance of strider is not only a relieving uh, factor for the doctor that the child is getting fine, but sometimes it can be uh, disastrous, uh, sometimes acute uh, obstruction of airway may occur as well, and the striders may, strider may disappear. The child can usually be managed at home. Uh, yes, definitely the parents need to be uh, to observe the child closely for the signs of increasing severity. The decision to manage the child at home or in the hospitals uh, is uh, influenced not only by the severity of illness but also by the time of 
day like uh, if it is night and uh, the parents are coming from remote area and uh, from some village and uh, they have not easy access to the hospital so keep the child in, uh, in i mean inside the hospital and uh, the child is uh, less than 12 months of age and uh, if the parents are anxious about uh, the health of the child so you should also admit these kind of uh, children as well so management is inhalation of warm moist air which is widely used but is of uh, unproven benefit the mainstay of treatment is the nebulization with the steroids especially bedesonide to reduce the severity and duration of the croup and uh, uh, some sometime we need to give oral prednisolone and uh, sometime injectable dexamethasone as well and uh, in case of dexamethasone a stat shot of uh, 0.5 mg per kg uh, would be sufficient for oral prednisolone you may continue for uh, 3 days in the morning and uh, uh, the dose uh, you can give from 1 mg to 2 mg per kg maximum dose is 40 mg in severe upper airways obstruction nebulized epinephrine uh, which is called uh, racemic epinephrine with oxygen by face mask provides transient improvement but one of the problems with the racemic epinephrine is that it could cause rebound uh, congestion so you, know, you should be aware of the rebound symptoms of the congestion and an anesthetist and intensivist uh, should be involved in the care as well only a few children with croup require tracheal intubation uh, because of steroid therapy uh, some children have a pattern of recurrent croup and uh, that may be related to the atopy which is a condition of uh, familial condition in the family of uh, people like uh, uh, eczema or asthma runs in the family so the people uh, having uh, eczema allergies and uh, uh, allergies like um, dust allergy hay fever uh, asthma and eczema they, these come under the umbrella of atopy and this these these things run in the family so next is acute epiglottitis uh, this is a severe condition and uh, is a life threatening emergency due to the high risk of respiratory obstruction it is caused by haemophilus influenzae type b so it is a bacteria in the uk and in many other countries like in pakistan the introduction of universal hib immunization in infancy has led to uh, more than 99% reduction in the incidence of epiglottitis and other invasive haemophilus influenzae type b infections there is an intense swelling of the epiglottitis and surrounding tissues associated with septicemia epiglottitis is most common in children aged 1 to 6 years but affects all age groups the onset of epiglottitis is often very acute with high grade fever this is in contrast to the group in which there is low grade fever toxic looking child uh, this is also in contrast to croup and the child would be happy in most of the cases of croup but uh, in severe croup definitely toxic looking and intensely painful throat that prevents the child from speaking or swallowing and uh, saliva would be drooling out from the chin or from the sideways of the mouth due to the obstruction soft inspiratory strider and rapidly increasing respiratory difficulty may occur in the child would be in the sitting uh, immobile position upright and with an open mouth to optimize the airways in contrast to viral croup cough is minimal or absent uh, and attempts to lie the child uh, or ex uh, examine a throat with a spatula or perform a lateral chest x ray must not be undertaken as they can precipitate total airway obstruction and death 
So we should be very careful if we are anticipating the diagnosis of acute epiglottitis. Um, should keep the uh, child, the patient at uh, ease, at comfort, and uh, we should not even try to put uh, uh, an IV line. And uh, because these procedures can uh, aggravate the anxiety of the patient, and uh, that can lead to the total airway obstruction and death. So minimal handling. So this is the lateral uh, radiograph of the soft tissue showing the edema of the epiglottis and it is uh, giving us a thumbprint sign and this is a radiological sign. If the diagnosis of uh, epiglottitis is uh, suspected, the urgent hospital admission treatment is required and uh, should be a teamwork between anesthetist and uh, pediatrician and ENT surgeon and uh, treatment should be initiated without any delay. The child should be transferred directly to the intensive care unit or in an aesthetic room and must be accompanied by senior medical staff in case respiratory obstruction occurs. Child should be intubated under controlled conditions with the general anesthetic. Really, this is impossible and urgent tracheostomy is life-saving as uh, the edema uh, is a factor which can cause problem in intubating the uh, patient. And in this situation, really, we need the tracheostomy. Only after the airway is secured, uh, we should take blood and uh, per culture sensitivity and uh, IV antibiotics like uh, cefirexime started. The tracheal tube can usually be removed after 24 hours and antibiotics should be given for 3 to 5 days. With appropriate treatment, most children recover completely within 2 to 3 days. As with other serious Hemophilus influenzae infections. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Prophylaxis with rifampicin is offered to close household contacts. So, take home message uh, minutes count in acute epiglottitis. So you should be very much careful. It's a life threatening illness. Thanks very much. If you need any questions, uh, you can uh, definitely contact me through my WhatsApp or through my email or through my facebook account some are already in contact with me and if you don't know my contact number or whatsapp number you can uh, contact with the admin and they can hand over you to the same thanks very much thank you